Hey everybody! Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> How's it going? Whew, what a amazing new moon that we had uh, last night coming into today. Um, I've had so many downloads today. So many things that have been really brought to light. And I am working on, I had to drop down a list. <laughs> you know, I hate lists. I'm one of those that, uh, that meme that says, um, the biggest lie I tell myself is, oh, I don't have to write that down. I remember. <laughs> so I'm learning my lesson, learning my lesson to write my list and to make life a little easier you know so um i may trigger a lot of you and i want you to know that that is far from my intentions that i really have been guided to share some things that i see and um, really using the energy of this Aquarius moon to be able to see the big picture and to see the big picture of humanity. And we're in Mercury retrograde. So right now I'm watching everything that's playing out and I'm reflecting over or back on the lessons that I've learned over the last three years. Um, you know, there's a lot of energy that's connected to the moons. Also a lot of energy that goes back to um, that eclipse, 1221. Okay, there's a lot of things that are being clipped out. Eclipses remove. They clip it out, okay? Um, one of the biggest things, it's 212 on my clock. One of the biggest things that I'm seeing is going to be the fall slide in the spiritual community. 222 on my clock. Um, what I mean by seeing the fall slide, something that I see a lot of um, when it comes to the twin flame journey, the inner child journey, the journey of self-love, um, you know, everybody's all about, you got to meditate, you got to change your diet, um, you need to exercise, you must follow this, you must follow that, da 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 but we're forgetting one of the most important parts which is our mind, our self-talk, how we are speaking to ourselves on a daily basis. What you think about, you bring about. And, you know, one of the biggest things that I'm seeing is people getting stuck in the story with the twin flame journey of making excuses to stay or hold on to something that's meant to be let go of. You know, you can't fuck up what's meant for you. Period. You can't fuck it up. And if they leave or someone else comes in, that's part of the journey. Everybody's journey is different. Everybody's journey is different. And it all goes back to the empath and the narcissist relationship. Empaths attract narcissist to teach them a lesson are you going to choose yourself or are you going to choose somebody else and this is something that i'm seeing across the board i mean i am in so many spiritual groups and this is something that's across the board i mean holding on to someone even though they're choosing to go somewhere else, is codependent um, tendencies. 
I mean, you are making excuses to continue holding onto a relationship that is not serving you to your greatest good and highest joy. Unfinished symphony. You are living the story over and over and over again. And you're creating the same situations because you're not choosing to write a different story. This is also a 10 card. That cycle has completed. Allow it to go. Allow it to go. <laughs> Deep knowing. I mean, it's kind of how I feel right now. The fates. Allow it to go. Okay? Because there is something bigger and better at the end of that journey. There's something bigger and better at the end of the journey, but you got to be able to believe and trust that it's going to be there. One of the biggest things that I can say that I've seen, it doesn't matter how much you change your diet, how much you exercise, how much you live in this false life. If you are not changing your own toxic behaviors and how you respond to relationships and situations and changing, completely changing your behavior, you're, you're living that story over and over again until you figure out that your mind is going to be the most important part. How you think about it, how you approach it mentally. Um, you literally escape prison the moment you do not allow someone else to control your joy. Um, one of the biggest things that I've learned and what's helped me to be able to guide through each situation to see, is this a divine connection or is this a cycle repeating to see if I've learned the lesson and the lessons come back up until you learn, you know, 717, until you learn how to change the way you respond. So, for instance, I want to give you an example. Um, when I started my twin flame journey, the journey to self-love, um, I had already taken a pretty hard look. I knew where I liked. I knew where um, I had a lot of darkness and shadow, being afraid of the dark, literally afraid of the dark, afraid of being alone, afraid of rejection, afraid to shine my light. And I was given the same situation that I usually always would fold and it would become a toxic relationship. So, being told that I needed to dim my light, or that I was too much, or that I was trying to force my opinions, um, all to justify the, the, um, the things that he was doing. And needless to say, um, you know, he started sleeping with another girl behind my back and <laughs> I could have cussed him. I could have said, this hurt my feelings. I could have said, whatever. I mean, that man really tested me to see if I was gonna fall back into the same behaviors that had been protection mechanisms that I had developed over the years to see if I was gonna fall back into that behavior. And I really challenged myself to do the opposite. Like you have to be aware of what you're saying and what you're doing and you have to consciously choose to be better in the situation. So are you gonna be bitter or are you gonna be better? And in being better, it is looking at, even though you've got a shit storm of so many things, betrayal, hurt, 
anger, even though you've got all that and you want to express it because you just want to be able to be like, you know what, that fucking hurt. And instead of doing that, I wrote a letter and said, you know what, you taught me that I could be real, I could be open, you showed me that I could be myself. But most importantly, you showed me that no matter what this connection was or what label I put on this connection, I was going to pick me. And I would find myself saying, this is not loving to self at all. Like, this is not loving to self. This is not self-love. And self-love is knowing your value and what you're worth. That's how you step into that queen essence. You know, like, what is meant for you will not leave. What is meant for you will not be hurtful. What is meant for you is already written in the stars. It's 11, 11 on the clock. It's already written in the stars. It's already faded. It's already destiny. So let go, let God. And I really want to see us focusing more on being able to recognize those toxic codependent behaviors. Like it's heartbreaking to me to see people get wrapped up in, but he, but he's my twin or she's my twin and they're just going through this and they'll be back or what if that's, what if it's not meant to be that way? And now you're stuck repeating the cycle of people coming in to leave you, to teach you how to deal with abandonment issues. You know, we can go down any rabbit hole that we choose until we choose to take a hard look at the direct cause and the effect of our behaviors. We're going to get the same story. And, you know, I don't know why this is so important for me to say. And just know that this is coming from a place of love. I've sent Reiki healing um, with Archangel Metatron. And my only intentions and goals is to really help those that are searching for And have that deep knowing that there is more to it than this. There is more to it. And <laughs> messages from our angels. Inspiration. A new idea comes to you like a gentle whisper inside your heart. Listen and take action. This inspiration is from high above. Um, I really just want to inspire you guys. I want to inspire you that no matter what label you put on the situation with a person, whether it is twin flame, karmic, divine, whatever, that you always do what's loving to self and what's loving to self is setting that precedence, that setting that um, that boundary of I deserve to be treated this way, I deserve to be picked, I deserve to be happy, I deserve to have the same thing that I am reciprocated back to me. And not getting tied up in the rat race. <laughs> That's kind of how I feel about it. Like, I woke up this morning like, what the hell is going on in the spiritual community? Like, what is going on? Imagine 
clearly visualize the life you want. Fill it in your heart and soul, and so it will become true. Um, I've been saying this for a while now. You've got to, when you change the way you look at the things, the things you look at change. You've really got to start focusing on what it is that you're wanting to bring into your reality. And the last one is love. The heart of love is the heart of creation. All is possible through love. All is worthwhile for love. May all you think and feel and reflect love's eternal truth. Um, I want to encourage you. Go seek Rummy. Uh, Rummy is one of my favorites. And... You know, I have that blessing from the first go around. You know, like you will reach the destination faster when you turn the focus back on yourself. Stop trying to pull it from out here. Love you first here. And know your value. I mean, that's that's huge. Know your value. No excuses. No, none of that. Know your value. Know your worth. <clears throat> know your value. Know your worth. All right. I'm going to be making um, a few video sequence. I'm going to get all my notes out. <laughs> so, hopefully, these messages find you well. These messages find you inspiration. All right. I love you guys. See you soon. Bye.